Ventura University founded on the site of an airport, reaching new heights, it's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane, and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. Hey Panther fans, please join us March 13th through the 16th as the CUSA Basketball Tournament heads back to Frisco, Texas. It's an unbelievable event, both inside and outside the arena. Please come and join us and cheer us on. We are stronger together. We push our teams to excel. In the classroom. On the court. In the community. Together we are committed and uplifting. Strong and authentic. We are building the next generation. A generation with integrity. And we're doing it our way. Supporting one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. We're back live in Miami on the campus of FIU, a jam-packed edition of Panther Talk Live at the Graham Center today. We've got men's and women's hoops, women's tennis, and track and field on the docket, and we're glad once again to have you along with us. A.J. Ricketts here in the Graham Center. We're going to start things off with tennis today. Coach Kat, Kat Petrovich for the women's tennis program joining us here this morning. Coach, it's a pleasure to have you on Panther Talk. The team's starting to round into form. You've won three of the past four matches, including some wins this weekend. Happy with the, this weekend's results, I'm sure. Yes, thank you very much for having me on your show, and apologize for not making it two weeks ago. We <laughs> had like two away trips. Yeah, well, no, understandable. <laughs> You've got some things to do. Very happy to be here today. I'm very happy to talk about our team, and uh, finally we are figuring out things, uh, what we can do better in doubles, especially singles. And uh, it's all, it's a very young team. I have uh, five new players out of seven. So um, um, it's, it's a working process, and every day uh, we are getting better and better. A little bit of a new identity this season than last year. And, and last look, if you don't know a number of the Olympic coaches here at FIU, you should. Coach coming off CUSA Coach of the Year honors. Now in the, the eighth season at the top of my head, I think eighth season here at FIU after a distinguished career at South Carolina. Coach, last year, the team conference champions, first time ever. Andrea Lazaro gets to the Elite Eight, I think, the first time that had ever happened. And now a little bit of a different feel this year. What's the process been like so far? A younger team. It's very challenging for coaches, and that's why I love <laughs> sure. my job. Yeah. I love coaching. And uh, actually to have a national champion like Andrea, it's my coach. I had a, my coach in college for 35 years. Didn't get one. So, And, <laughs> and he was my mentor yeah. in South Carolina. So um, very, very challenging. But that's what coaching is all about, sure. is making sure that these young ladies get a good education and improve in tennis. What a fun season it was. I mean, the, the team advancing to the first round of the NCAA tournament, almost getting by UCF. It came down to the wire there, but still a team that finished 17 and three. You've had some time now to reflect and look back on what you guys accomplished last year. What, what thoughts come to mind when you look back on the 2018 FIU tennis team? I would say it's a hard work, and I would say having a three seniors, uh, Andrea, Nerma, and Mina, they did a great job as a team leaders. And uh, it's kind of, it, it was like coaching, but it's like they wanted to win. Yeah. I don't know how to say. We lost twice in the finals the years before, and, you know, we were really, really close, and um, Marina Wexler stepped up. And she won, even though she thought that she didn't play good last year. Um, and she she won, and she almost won for us in the first round of the NCAA. And it's interesting you say she thought she didn't play well. All she did was uh, go undefeated against conference opponents. Exactly. Uh, first team all CUSA, and she was 16 and six in singles last she year. Not still bad. Thinks not bad. Not she bad she for the scene. She's the leader on this year's exactly. team. You have to say. Yes, you know, I, w I would have say I would have said that too. And unfortunately, last few matches that we had, we Marina had a injury yeah. and hopefully you know hopefully we are working on it she found a way to win this weekend uh, despite being not 100 yeah. percent so uh, that's all what college tennis is all about all right as we wrap things up with cat uh coach i went out to the key biscayne tennis courts for the first time ever uh last week because uh, unfortunately that's not where the sony open is anymore they moved it to hard rock so y there's a lot of courts back there if you've never been great area real tranquil and peaceful so i went out to the courts to play tennis hadn't played in a while i got waxed six one six one so i need i need to ask you we need top three tips from from a tennis coach from tennis pro for beginners 
What, or, what, what can those of us who don't have the experience do to be more competitive and maybe get 6-3, 6-4 instead of 6-1, 6-0? Three tips, you Three said. tips. Okay. I'm writing these down. Write it up. <laughs> Footwork is the first. Okay. Uh, playing along points, which means 10 rallies, mm -hmm. and focus on the percentage of the first serves. As in, so the h how many yes. first serves you get across? You get across. Yeah. And I'm asking you right now, how many service games did you win losing 6 1? Well, mo lost most all of them, whether there I was serving or not. <laughs> <laughs> I had some good serves, and but if I didn't get the first one, I, I just didn't have confidence. Uh, I just had to get it over the next I time. I would be more than happy to help you. Out yeah, this. all right. I, I'm tell Harry Kroll, you beat me 6 1 last week. It's not happening anymore. I got <laughs> Coach, appreciate the time. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. Appreciate Coming off CUSA, Coach of the Year honors. Got a good program going over at FIU Women's Tennis. We talk hoops when we return on Panther Talk. We are stronger together. We push our teams to excel. In the classroom. On the court. In the community. Together we are committed and uplifting. Strong and uplifting. We are building the next generation. A generation with integrity. And we are doing it our way. Supporting one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. Hey FIU Panther fans, please join us March 13th through the 16th as the Conference USA Basketball Tournament heads back to Frisco, Texas. It's a great event, both inside and outside the arena, so plan to be there and cheer us on. We're a university founded on the site of an airport, reaching new heights, it's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane, and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. Hey Panther fans, please join us March 13th through the 16th as the CUSA Basketball Tournament heads back to Frisco, Texas. It's an unbelievable event both inside and outside the arena. Please come and join us and cheer us on. We are stronger together. We push our teams to excel. In the classroom. On the court. In the community. Together we are committed and uplifting. Strong and authentic. We are building the next generation. A generation with integrity. And we're doing it our way. Supporting one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. Back on the beautiful campus, the Modesto Medique Grounds here at FIU, another Panther Talk Live. Glad to have you with us this still, yeah, still morning, 11.39, as we continue along on Panther Talk Live. A.J. Ricketts, Tierra Malcolm, a big rivalry win this past weekend against the Owls. That's always nice. Always love to get one of those on the docket, a rivalry win. So you split the season series. Congratulations on that. Thank you. 56-49, and it, it helps with conference positioning and helps with the momentum of the team, and I, I know you, you had an en that was an enjoyable game for everyone all around this weekend. Mm -hmm. It definitely was, um, especially the way it started. I thought that we came out and, um, you know, kind of had a plan when we came out. You know, the yeah. players knew that they were going to attack, and um, defensively we were pretty good. So um, it, it, they did their thing from that standpoint. Uh, Sonara Skeins just continues her, her terrific output. Now 15 and 16 in, in that game against FB. Every time you're on, it's, it's like she's achieved a new milestone <laughs> or, or had a, a tr another terrific performance. She had 15. Chelsea goes 11. Nobody else with more than seven. Those two really were working well d down in the post throughout that game. Yeah, they did a good job. And, I mean, especially um, Chelsea got going early, and then Sonera kind of picked up the slack late. Um, and, you know, obviously get her getting on the glass and things like that. And um, we had some clutch buckets at the end. I know yeah. no one else had more than seven, but – uh, Paris hit a, a huge pull-up jumper. Paula had a huge pull-up jumper to end the third quarter. Paula had a great drive and finish. Um, 
you know, somewhere there in the fourth. So everyone contributed in, in their own way, maybe not just with points. Yeah, the Owls had that little bit of a flurry towards the finish there, but you still look at the overall box score and not too shabby numbers for the group defensively. You hold FAU to 24% clip from the field, including 2 for 18 beyond the arc. I think they were 0 for 10 in one of the halves. What did you like out of the defense? Obviously, they, they executed well, but what facets of the defense Yeah, did you like? I, I thought that we were locating people, you know, wearing some, some earlier games. We, we've lost people. Yeah. Um, you know, and that caused us timely buckets and, and maybe stopped some of our runs offensively. But um, I thought that they were really locked in and really tuned in, you know, with personnel and things like that. So I thought we did a pretty good job. Uh, speaking of Sonera, uh, we were mentioning, you know, uh, her run and her how she's picked things up. But she had those seven straight double-figure games as mm -hmm. the start of conference play rolled around. But then, you know, teams adjust. Freshman hit a wall. Mm -hmm. Three points against UTSA, eight against against Rice, two versus North Texas. Had, had a little bit of a, scoring, a drop in scoring, but now has come back with these double-figure games. What did you see? Did, how much did teams adjust? How much was it a wall? What did you see out of her play in, in that drop in production? I think it was a little bit uh, a mix of both. And, yeah. and obviously when you're a freshman and, and her, and she wants to do well. Yeah. You know, She wants to bring those energy plays and rebound and things like that. And people kind of adjusted and took her out of her game a little bit, which got her a little bit frustrated. You know, But the message was always – just continue to do what you do. You bring energy, you rebound the ball, you get us extra possession. So just continue to do that. And, and kudos to her. She kind of worked her way out yeah. of out of the slump that she was in. Was she someone who still gave you what you wanted defensively on the boards, hustle plays throughout that low scoring stretch? Or as a freshman, do you have to kind of get on to her a little bit about no, that? No, no, she did. Yeah. She, she continued to, that's to what bring you want. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you can bring it in all facets when the scoring's not there, that's that's a veteran. Absolutely. That's a veteran thing. And, and she's a freshman, so those are facets that you like. All right, moving forward. Look, there's – it's tough to, to read all into what the tiebreakers may be. There's a couple of teams in the mix for those final conference spots. So obviously you win the final two and you're in. That's what you want. You've got Charlotte at home this upcoming weekend and then Marshall on the road. What excites you about this opportunity right now? Um, I just think that, you know, we have a chance to kind of uh, have it in our own hands, yeah. not worry about anyone else. So um, we get one on our home floor. Um, and then obviously we got to finish on the road, but I mean the most important thing is is the first game right in front of you. So you know, take care of that. Get someone at home. You know, obviously we we play way better at home. So <laughs> hopefully that provides them you know a little bit of, of comfortability that that we're able to win that game. Yeah, we're previewing Charlotte and Marshall right now. Hopefully soon in a couple of weeks we're previewing Frisco on yeah. the, <laughs> the conference USA I like tournament. That. Coach, appreciate the time. Thank Great you. win this weekend. That's Tara Thanks. Malcolm, Jeremy Ballard. When we return on Panther Talk Live. All right, Coach, appreciate it. We are stronger together. We push our teams to excel. In the classroom. On the court. In the community. Together, we are committed and uplifting. Strong and objective. We are building the next generation. A generation with integrity. And we are doing it our way. Supporting one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. Hey FIU Panther fans, please join us March 13th through the 16th as the Conference USA Basketball Tournament heads back to Frisco, Texas. It's a great event both inside and outside the arena, so plan to be there and cheer us on. We're a university founded on the side of an airport, reaching new heights, it's in our DNA. And since then we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane, and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. Hey Panther fans, please join us March 13th through the 16th as the CUSA Basketball Tournament heads back to Frisco, Texas. It's an unbelievable event, both inside and outside the arena. Please come and join us and cheer us on. We are stronger together. We push our teams to excel. In the classroom. On the court. In the community. Together we are committed and uplifting. Strong and authentic. We are building the next generation. A generation with integrity. And we're doing it our way. Supporting one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way.
Well, February rolls along and the madness of March approaches. Already the drama and matchups filled with high intensity and big time rivalry shots. We saw that this weekend on the road at FAU. Brian Beard hitting a number of those hidden alongside Snara Skeins, our FIU Panthers of the Week. After their big time performances, Skeins a double double, 15 points, 16 boards in the home win against the Owls. And then Brian Beard. Man, he loves playing in Boca. Some big time shots down the stretch from beyond the arc and the free throw line. Those two are our Panthers of the week. Very good uh, Good morning to you. Welcome back to Panther Talk Live. AJ Ricketts, Jeremy Ballard. Coach, congratulations on another win up in Boca. That <laughs> high intensity, great yeah. games, both of them uh, up and up in the borough. And you have to be thrilled with the big shot, big, big time shot making. The defense once again rising to the occasion, making the shots down the stretch. A great overall performance this weekend. Yeah, unique situation. You know, FIU FAU trilogy we had yeah, going on round there. Three. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always great to be able to beat your rival twice in a season and, and to do it on their home court twice is, uh, is special. So we were happy. It's funny. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, Maybe that's not even the end of, <laughs> of, this, of this season series so far, depending on what happens with the rest of pod play. So you, you take the win, 79-76, one of the more fascinating games this season. Look, we've had a number of barn burners, a lot of close games up and down, but you're up by as many as 16 in this one, and they come storming back. You're down by eight all of a sudden with about six minutes to go. How the heck do you steady the course in a rivalry game on the road when all that momentum has just been taken from you? Well... We played FIU basketball to start the game, yeah. and it's, it, it's as well as we played all year long defensively. Our guys were ready to go. We really went at them. Uh, we left a lot of points on the on the board, on the table, uh, missing free throws, and you know it kind of allowed them to hang around. We probably should have been up about 20 points. But we knew FAU would make a run. They're a good team, and they're on their home court. So I was just proud of our guys that we responded from, from their run. Yeah. Uh, we took their flurry of punches, and – you know, we came back with knockout punch. You, ca you countered with a 10-0 spurt, I think, if I remember correctly. All right, let's talk AD. A Antonio Day and, and this freshman's s recent surge. He's been steady all season long. I think 14 double-figure games, but in particular, his shooting aspect. Look, after his big game against North Texas, you said, well, AD's been in the gym. Yeah, He's absolutely. been working, and uh, this isn't a surprise to finally see this come together, but to put it in numerical perspective, all right, 27 games four threes and then the last two games he's eight for 13 from beyond the arc that's terrific and that's a big jump and, and it's not surprising to you and it's great to see for everyone well he actually hasn't taken a lot of threes on the year yeah. now he certainly didn't make any coming into these last two, two games but you know he hadn't tried to prove that he was a three-point yeah. shooter when he wasn't confident with the stroke but he's certainly been living in the gym working on that with our assistant coaches with our, with, with our managers um, and and you know the time has come you know teams really were play, are, have been playing off of him and, and trying to load up with his defender on, on other guys with the ball, and he's made them play pay in the last two games. Was, what was your your strategy with, with the coaching staff's message to him when he was four for 41 or whatever it was, with just keep shooting? We're going to keep yeah, designing keep, sets that m may give you a shot? Yeah, keep yeah. playing the right way, taking the right threes. Yeah. Um, the thing that's really special about uh, AD is that even if teams are playing off of him, he's so quick and so strong, he can still get in the paint and make things yeah. happen. So you don't have to settle for any shot that you're not – comfortable taking or that's not in rhythm um, but also if you take it you know step up and, and shoot it with confidence because you should have confidence for the time that you put in the gym working yeah. on it and he's had a career high in his last two games it's starting to pay off 20 against north texas 22 on the road at fau coach you, you rewind the week before that i think two weeks ago excuse me the, the texas road trip uh, utsa and utep what wasn't clicking on that trip that, that has since been reversed, especially the defensive effort, the defensive numbers. But what wasn't clicking on that trip, and has anything changed in your mind since then in, in this three-game stretch? Well, there's a lot of factors in play. Winning on the road is hard. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you make that long road trip out there to, to Texas, it's always going to be tough. But, you know, we played a UTSA team that's got arguably the two most explosive players in the yeah, league on the team, and they were playing some of the best basketball in the conference at the time. And, and we played poorly in that game. They played really well. They were ready for us. They punched us in the nose. And it's one of the few games where we just didn't respond to it. Yeah. And then we came out in UTEP. And, and you know, if, if you think back to it, we actually had a really good start. And, and I thought we had a good approach to that game. Uh, we had a lot of guys getting foul trouble. It was a very disjointed game. And, um, you know, ultimately we just didn't defend the way we needed in those two games. And – we came back with the commitment to truly get better in practice, to truly compete and hold each other accountable um, in, in every practice and workout session. And, 
And because of that effort we put in the practice court, we started yeah. getting the results that, that we want. Hey, taking a step back, I mean, for you personally, how much fun are you having right now? I mean, this is you sealed the, the team's first winning season in a number of years. You're closing in on the school record uh, for victories in a season. You have the team in a competitive state and conference play, and it's in year one for you as a head coach. How fun is this right now for you? Yeah, I mean, this uh, I'm incredibly fortunate to do something I love with a team I love. Um, these these are our guys, um, you know, that, that, that we're a family, and I, I love seeing their growth. Um, I, I love seeing them being being able to reap some rewards from the hard work they put in, but um, there's still a lot left to do, and, and I, I think w this team has some special in them. So, yeah. um, you know, if, if we keep staying together and and uh, we, we keep pushing each other and holding each other accountable, then, then we can achieve something truly special. All right, moving forward, you've got a, a little bit of time before the next game, more than usual. We've got La Tech this Sunday, I believe, then Marshall on the road moving forward. The bonus play set up. Uh, not not too bad. Essentially, FAU, it's not a home game, but it's South Florida. It's nice to be in South Florida for an extra game. You got La Tech, who you defeated at home earlier. But that was that was a close one, 75-69. Well, I think a six-point game it was against La Tech and, and Coach Conkle squad. So you've got them this upcoming Sunday. What stood out to you about, about that game and, and that win? What do we have to emphasize moving forward to a, another matchup with Bulldogs? Yeah, I mean, it was a, an, an uncommon game the last time we played La Tech. Um, you know, both teams ended up playing zone. We never played. We hadn't played in the <laughs> Of zone Didn't know what I was watching all, all year long, and uh, we ended up playing about 30 minutes of zone against them, and it was effective. Um, you know, I don't think they were they were prepared to see zone against us, yeah. and and they didn't play as well against it. But we can't count on just sitting back in a zone and and La Tech playing poorly again. They're they're a good team, well coached team, and they're playing really good basketball right now. So. We're going to have to play FIU basketball to beat them. We're going to have to play a lot better than we did the last time because yeah. they're going to be hungry to, to come back and get some revenge. Um, but, well, I think we're playing our best basketball of the season. We're certainly <laughs> defending better than we have all year long. And if we defend, if we're solid on defense, then we give ourselves a chance in every game. Yeah, looking forward to it. Sunday against La Tech, teams won three in a row, including a rivalry matchup this past weekend. So 2-1 series edge against the Owls in year one under Jeremy Ballard and, uh, and closed it in on the school record for wins in a season. Coach, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Thanks for joining Appreciate us. It. Yeah, we'll see you out there at the gym soon. That's Jeremy Bowd. We'll talk with Ryan Heverling, track and field, coming off a good performance at conference. When he returns, stay with us on Parents of Talk. Thanks, Bob. We are stronger together. We push our teams to excel. In the classroom. On the court. In the community. Together, we are committed and uplifting. Strong and uplifting. We are building the next generation. A generation with integrity. And we are doing it our way. Supporting one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. We are stronger together. We push our teams to excel. In the classroom. On the court. In the community. Together we are committed and uplifting. Strong and uplifting. We are building the next generation. A generation with integrity. And we are doing it our way. Supporting one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. We are stronger. We're a university founded on the side of an airport, reaching new heights. It's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane, and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. Hey Panther fans, please join us March 13th through the 16th as the CUSA Basketball Tournament heads back to Frisco, Texas. It's an unbelievable event, both inside and outside the arena. Please come and join us and cheer us on. We are stronger together. We push our teams to excel. In the classroom. On the court. In the community. Together we are committed and uplifting. Strong and authentic. We are building the next generation. A generation with integrity. And we're doing it our way. Supporting one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way.
Beautiful day at FIU. Another winter day. We're in the 80s. Paradise. Panther Talk Live at the Graves Center continues here on a Monday morning. Glad to have you with us. AJ Ricketts, track and field head coach Ryan Heverling. I love talking track. We know that. Uh, can't talk enough about it. Uh, welcome back to Panther Talk Live. I'm AJ Ricketts, your host. There was no host at the Oscars last night, but we're going to continue with the host for now. <laughs> Hopefully it can continue in this role moving forward on Panther Talk. <laughs> coach, congratulations on a, a great performance at the CUSA Indoor Championships. 55 Five points for the women. That's the most you ever had in the history mm -hmm. of the program. A lot of standout performances on the men's side as well. You have four athletes medal. I know you were happy with those performances. Yeah, well, thank you for having me here. Ah, absolutely. Um, I've been waiting for my chance to get out here. Oh, yeah. I've got a lot to talk it's about. It's going to be a weekly thing now. <laughs> <laughs> if you audition well today, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, I think it was a really good meet. Um, we talked to the team a lot about leading into the, the conference meet that we just needed to execute um, – and nothing special had to happen, and no. we talk about that every year. You don't have to go in there and have the performance of a lifetime, but the great thing about our program that I love is that most of our kids show up, um, you know, at the biggest meet of the year. And for us, I think, God, we probably had about 12 personal bests that day, yeah. if I'm th remembering correctly. And, you know, for us, like, it's really important that we line everything up, uh, you know, at, at the big meet. But we were excited. I mean, I, there's always still more we can do. And the biggest thing was how tight it was there, um, you know, the first place team scored 89, I think, and a half points. And yeah. he had 55 and a half. I mean, we're 30, I think it's 34 points from the top there from first to sixth. And, and a our very biggest small thing difference from the podium as well, yeah. And and our biggest thing is just that uh, we get so much better outdoors. We have great javelin throwers. We have the best discus throwers, the best hammer throwers. You know, we've got so many young athletes that are really starting to figure it out. And just, I don't know, across the years, we've always seemed to do better during the outdoor season. Sure. I think yep. it's just we're used to that outdoor, uh, you know, Florida sun. We don't want to be inside. Yeah, we want to be outside. The team takes on the personality of its location <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> That's understandable. Let's talk about the four medalists here. Mm. Clarissa, obviously a, a standout career here at FIU, uh, coming off an All-American indoor season. Mm -hmm. So her third straight CUSA indoor high jump championship. Teresa Russell in the weight throw. Sherilyn in the 3,000, I believe. Yep. And, and Jada Roberson as well. Finally getting on that podium yep. after coming so close before. Uh, just talk about th those few. Well, the, the most important thing for me and, uh, you know, Coach Sullivan and, and Coach Fullwood, who helps with the jumps and the throws, our biggest thing was that for athletes like Clarissa and Teresa is, is trying to keep them – focus on actually going out and, and executing at the meet because for athletes like that that are you know extremely highly ranked in the nation yeah sometimes you know you go to a meet like that and conference usa is no joke it's one of the best conferences in the country mm -hmm. if you look at the high jump competition and the, the weight throw competition those marks in there those were some of the best in the country so the hardest thing for them is that we got to stay focused and execute and i was really proud of clarissa and um Teresa. It, it was just a business trip for them and when they get out there it wasn't like um they were nervous. I mean, you know, Teresa's warming up. She's laughing. She's loose. She feels good. And her first throw uh, was was easy enough to win the conference. Now, she improved on her throws. Yeah. The first throw was a conference-winning throw. And she did the same thing last year at Outdoors in the hammer throw. And that was, like, our biggest thing is, like, don't don't play around with it. And same with, with uh, Clarissa. She got a little competition. There's a freshman at the Western yeah. Kentucky. Yeah, Eisenberger, good. I think, yeah. Yeah, she was a very good high jumper in high school. And I think she's starting to figure out had to jump at the collegiate level. So, I, honestly, that, I think, really helped Clarissa hit that national mark. With the 183, she should be at nationals, no problem. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, with, the, with an athlete like Caris Clarissa, look, she's been to nationals. She's been an All-American. She was jumping in the rain at Hayward Field last year, which is like the epitome of, of where you want to be as, as a collegiate track and field athlete. Is, is there ever been a – is it tough to resist the sense of complacency? When, when an athlete has achieved something like that, or has she been hungry and, and ready to keep going all, all season long after that? I, I think with any athlete that experiences success, yeah. you do have to fight that a little bit. But honestly, with her, it uh, hasn't been the case. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, at this point, you, we have to – I don't want to say play games, but we have to find little ways to, to keep that motivation up. I mean, for someone like, you know, Clarissa and Teresa, and I'm hoping the rest of the young women on the team too um, – we, we want to be competing until June. Mm -hmm. And some of them, uh, we have international athletes that are going to compete for their countries in uh, July, August. I mean, they need to stay focused. So a lot of times in this early season of outdoors, we try to, you know, have a little fun here. I mean, Clarissa might be, you know, she might be high or a long jump in here. You yeah. Know, one of, like, the early meets. Some and, other things, yeah. And Teresa, we've talked about throwing different various weights at meets just to try and see, hey, can we throw far with an overweight hammer, you know, can – can we do, you know, far discus those with a non-reverse? You know, it's a little like track lingo, but we, we try to figure out how to, to have that little 
a little like change that can just kind of keep them motivated. But honestly, I mean, these are athletes that say, you know, listen, this is our last year here. We want to go out on top. And, yeah. and even like talking about like Jada and, and Sherry Lean. Sherry Lean's always someone that she just wants to do more and more and more. And she's the kind of athlete you're like, all right, let's rein it <laughs> in a little bit. Yeah. Trust me, Coach Felix can tell you a ton of stories. Yeah. But someone like Jada, she has worked so hard and has dealt with so much change over the years. I think she's, you know, she's probably had about three different sprint coaches to the point where we were just so proud that regardless of whatever change she went through, whatever she was experiencing, we knew what Jada was going to bring to the table. Yeah. And I, we were just so happy that she really put it together. And she was one of our top, you know, point scorers at the conference. And, and, and you know, for, for us, for her to be able to go out like that at that indoor championships, that was just huge because she – she works so hard, and, sh and you she know what's funny? Fourth the previous year in the 60, yes. I think. Yeah, and, and she's one of those uh, young women, darn near a 4.0 GPA. So, you know, I, I love I love when student athletes, you know, that that kind of have that execution on and off the track. And yeah. she was just somebody that she deserved that, you know. Hey, uh, what's the phrase? What's the motto? Look good, play good, or look whatever. There's variations look good, of it. Feel good. Yeah, look good, play feel good. good, play well. Uh, let's bring up the photo. These are are some of the most elite track jerseys I think uh, in, in the NCAA love right those. now. Uh, what do we call them? The Miami Vice these edition. Are, these are our Miami Vice. <laughs> we uh, the coaching staff and I. Yeah, what's and the we story here? How do so we get this? So. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, there's old school, new school, all different things. Yeah. I, I want to stand out. And when we go to meets, there's so many schools with blue, black, white, gray, even blue and gold. I mean, we go to some meets and people think, oh, there's Notre Dame or somebody or yeah. Akron or whoever. And I said, how do we stand out? I said, let's do something pink. And, and we said, okay, you know, we do a little something. We do a breast cancer awareness uniform for yeah. our cross country team in October. But we said, you know what? Like, we're, we're in Miami, Florida. I want to stand out. So we, we said, let's get um, Miami Vice. And now, trust me, we've spent probably three months working on this uniform <laughs> to make sure that we found something that looked good. Well, you know, first it was like pink and blue, and we said, that ah, doesn't pop enough. Let's get black in there. Yeah. You know, we're working on different designs and stuff. And I thought Adidas was going to hate us by the time because they kept sending us these renderings of the uniforms. <laughs> and we're like, all right, we'll make this tweak, make that tweak. Well, it gives them a fun challenge to work on. It yeah. does. Yeah. And, and we, we ran it by our seniors. We said, what do you think about these uniforms? And they loved them. And every meet we go to, everyone's like, who is that? Who's that? And, you know, we go off and we win our event and it says, oh, oh that's FIU. Yeah. Look at those uniforms. So our biggest thing was that, you know what, we, we want to em embody what Miami means and we stand out. The and flare, I'm telling you, yeah. we're trying to figure out what we're going to do next year because now we have to try and – we got to follow this up with something. Well, we put we posted that photo on Instagram, and I think literally every single former FIU track and field athlete was commenting, asking for a jersey. <laughs> so now, you, need, you may need to get some extra. A little you have some, some close friends expecting something from, yes. from your coach. And a little fun <laughs> fact about those uniforms. One of our alumni, yeah. uh, Billy Gill, is on the Dan Levitard show. And yeah, he actually, he raced the freeze. He raced the freeze wearing our uniform. So everyone across ESPN across the country they got to see our you know our unique well done, uniforms yeah. and uh, you know now um, we're just like all right we got to follow it up with something <laughs> good so you know the, the coaching staff's trying to rein me in I'm like we're gonna go with neon yellow and we're gonna do this yeah. and I said all right you know coach let's bring it in a little bit we got to stay within something but you know honestly track and field's one of those sports where you know why, why can't we go why crazy with yeah. stuff and stand out and, it's, and it kind of resembled the, the, the recently released that recently released uh, sun Sunset Vice jerseys from uh, the Miami Heats. Yes. They, they have, you know, the, the white they did in the spring and then the mm -hmm. black, which caused, you know, the fanfare. And then they released pink and people went crazy. Uh, it sold out immediately. And then I think it was around the same time frame we, we, we saw the debut of our pink ones. And it's it's Miami, man. I it's, love it. It's the the South Beach Art Deco yeah. look. I mean, why not? See, maybe maybe get some teal in there. Hey, you know what? We'll get uh maybe get some uh, some Winwood artists to th draw a little <laughs> something up. Yeah. You know why not? Take on the personality of the city. <laughs> right. No, I love that. Uh, one one guy we may want to send a jersey to uh, on his travels, Pablo Espita. Uh, let's tell his story. So he was on the team not that long ago. He started to go fund me. He's trying to raise money for for university students here at FIU. He's trekking across Europe. Eventually across Asia this is awesome he's he's riding his bike and tenting and having a heck of a time and I, I know you're, you're enjoying keeping track of Pablo yeah so pa I mean Pablo's great he was um, he was a student athlete for us for four years and he was um, you know he was on our staff for a year you know in a volunteer role and he's, he's just one of those guys he, he bleeds blue and gold and yeah. pink now we can't <laughs> and um, you know he, he, he brought this idea probably about maybe like eight months ago and we just supported him the whole way and, and you know I, I I don't talk to him all that often. It's yeah. probably about every, you know, maybe once a week. I'll shoot him a little message on Instagram or he'll shoot me a text or something. But he's just one of those great guys, and he just he wants to do as much as he can, but he wants to experience everything possible. Yeah. So 
Honestly, I'm really jealous. I'd love to do that, but I right. got a six-month-old at home. Yeah. And my wife, I can't go anywhere. How's coaching on no sleep going? How is that? that, was that, is that <laughs> I, you know, I, I, uh, I love coffee, but yeah. I've had to switch to um, – you know, uh, was it cafecito? Just yeah, something a like little stronger. But I don't share it. I just take the whole thing, <laughs> and um, I'm up for, for 20 hours. But no, There's so a Cafe Bustella right there if you need to. I'm going to have to go there after this. But my <laughs> wife told me, uh, she sent me this little uh, meme, and it was funny. It goes, you know, I, um, you know, I, 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 I feed the baby because my husband can't, you know, breastfeeding. <laughs> and then she goes, uh, my husband sleeps because I can't. So I, I am picking up a little bit of the <laughs> workload. I'm making sure that I'm getting enough sleep for both of us. Yeah, but and you got a team to take care of, too. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot cool. of needy runners and jumpers <laughs> on, on the team. That's Luckily, yeah. most of them are self-sufficient. So, <laughs> Coach, appreciate the time. Pablo, have some fun over in Europe. We'll be in touch with you. We'll have an article out on him pretty soon. Biking through uh, two continents, that's pretty awesome, and, and raising funds for, for FIU students. Coach, congratulations on COSAs. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully we'll see how things shake out with uh, Clarissa uh, and Nationals coming up soon. And then uh, on to outdoor season with the team. As you said, they've been really strong here the last couple seasons. We'll see what happens. Been a lot of fun. All right, that's Coach Heberling. I'm A.J. Ricketts. That's, that was a jam-packed edition of Panther Talk today. We had <laughs> tennis and men's and women's hoops, track and field. A lot going on. Crossover season at FIU. That's another edition of Panther Talk Live. Our executive producer, Chris Santiago. I'm A.J. Ricketts from Miami. It's a beautiful day. Go have yourselves a good week. We'll see you next time. Take care.